Hi guys, today I'll be talking about the complete guide to do the SEO. This basic this guide will basically include a um, sort of checklist that you can download below. Um, I'll be going through each and every aspect of the che checklist and um, sort of saying, you know, why Duda is good for SEO, different aspects of their sort of platform that they can use for um, SEO, uh, and, um, you know, different aspects of the checklist as well. Um, so let's just get into it. So on-page SEO tool essentials. So obviously all you need really um, for this uh, checklist is the Screaming Frog to find out, you know, which, um, you know, what the on-site issues are in terms of SEO and the technical issues. Um, you can use obviously Bing, uh, Google Analytics and Google Search Console. This basically means that you want to connect them up to the website. Um, just so obviously you need Google Analytics and Google Search Console to, to understand sort of off-page issues that Google may have mentioned, certain like uh, manual penalties and things like that. Um, just to be clear, this is for people that are kind of familiar with SEO already and already understand SEO. Um, you know, uh, obviously this is kind of a bit more technical sort of stuff for SEOs. Um, if you don't really understand SEO too much, I'd recommend going to find a sort of tutorial video maybe on the, the sort of basics of SEO. This will basically be covering, covering all the different things in terms of technicalities of SEO using a Duda website, using the Duda website builder. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So I'm just going to summarize each um, part. And obviously if you are familiar with SEO, you can, um, you'll obviously understand each and every section and each and every part. If you are unsure on some of these, please just send me a message, send me an email. Um, and I'll try and get back to you. So um, let's just start off. So SSL certificate installed. So what's great about uh, Duda is they actually give you a free SSL certificate when you purchase a site from them, which is wonderful. Um, the reason why an SSL certificate is uh, is needed for SEO and SEO rankings is because Google sees it's a, it's a ranking factor, first of all, for Google, and it actually uh, shows that your site is secure for people um, when they land on the site, if they're making purchases or anything like that. Um, it just shows uh, and it indicates to Google that your site is secure, so they'll actually rank you higher. Um, if you have that SSL certificate. And what's great about Duda is they actually offer a free SSL certificate with every site that's purchased. So yeah, okay. And then, right, we'll go back. Um, obviously we've got the uh, two call to actions, um, which is a great thing to have for, uh, for um, conversion rate optimization. And what's great about Duda is obviously it's got a drag and drop sort of um, platform where you can go in and obviously you can just drag, you know, I've got two call to actions here. We've obviously got the uh, paid call to action and the free call to action here. Um, and I can simply just drag in, drag them about, drag them down here, drag them in here, drag them under here. You know, I can drag them anywhere. I can make, I can add more call to actions wherever I see fit. I can, I can drag a um, call to action up here. I'll just show you in the, um, in the uh, in the navigation bar, so it's really easy to sort of you know add these. These are really easy requirements to have. To be fair, um, and some of them are completed for you because of the Duda platform. It's just to double uh, just to double check, just in case you've missed anything or you'd like to confirm anything with a client. Because sometimes clients are, ask questions about these sorts of things. Um, so yeah, that's more sort of conversion rate optimization. This is sort of a mixture of web design, conversion rate optimization, SEO and technical SEO. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> obviously a site, HTML sitemap created and in footer. So um, one of the great things about a sitemap, obviously you've got two types. You've got the, um, uh, this is just an example website. So you've got the sitemap um, XML, which is for Google. Google bots and then you've got the sort of more um, the HTML sitemap for people when they land on the site and they want to find a certain page. Um, this is also uh, a ranking factor too for Google because Google actually sees um, websites that make it easier for for business uh, for um, customers and visitors um, to navigate through the site. They see this as a um, a ranking factor because it's it's better for um, user intent and use uh, sorry not user intent. Um, uh, user friendly um sort of surf user friendly optimization so this is great for that so i'd recommend making a sort of a html sitemap like this putting it into, into the footer down here and obviously doing the xml sitemap and things you could go the extra mile and actually call this ht uh, this sitemap sitemap.html in case anyone wants to find it um or you could just leave it a sitemap like that so yeah um and then obviously 
<clears throat> we've got indexation and things. So one of the things that uh, Google does is they um, they crawl your site. Um, uh, I'm obviously you're familiar with this. They crawl your site with Google bots and you have a crawl budget. So they crawl a certain amount of um, uh, URLs and pages and things. And obviously you want this these um, bots to crawl uh, your most important pages and your most uh, relevant pages. It's whatever you're trying to rank for. So if you have certain things like thank you pages and PDFs and post tags and product tags and all these useless sort of pages indexed and you can actually find out if they're indexed by going you know site um you know site let's say for example i'm just going to go on this site um url you can actually see all of the results here and if they've got loads and loads of results it's more than likely they've got some sort of you know um you know they've got useless pages indexed like um thank you pages pdf states and things like that um, I'll explain just right now for thank you pages. Obviously, you don't want that to be indexed as well because that's conversion tracking. So you want to have thank you pages in place for you to track conversions. Um, if Google sees index these thank you pages, pages they're not going to um, they're going to see it as uh, not relevant to what you're trying to rank for. So say if you're um, let me try and explain this. Say if you're trying to rank for um, uh, I don't know books and you make all these pages around books, but you have all of these useless pages like thank you pages and PDFs and dates and things that aren't relevant to books. Google's going to see that and it's going to waste your crawl budget by crawling those pages as well, and it's going to be harder for you to rank. So that's really important. And um, I'm just going to show you how you can uh, sort of um, non-index these pages in Duda. Uh, all you have to do is actually go to pages in here um, and then click on settings, go to SEO, and then you can just no index here. So that's really good. So uh, I'll just explain what no indexing is. It basically just stops the pages, uh, the Google bots crawling your website and show them, showing them in um, Google, search, uh, Google search queries and um, like this. So they shouldn't be seen in here once you've no index them and you can test that out by doing this little technique here, just type it in site and then type it in the URL here. So that's really good. <clears throat> so uh, just going back to the first bit as well, um, just to let you know, Go uh, each Duda website comes with a, um, a site map already uh, created. So they create it automatically like this. So you don't have to download some, um, you know, Yoast or anything like that to generate a site map. And um, they create it automatically with, it, with all their sites. So that's really good. Um, they also do a robot.txt as well, which is just as important as the site map. Um, so they generate these things automatically. Um, so whereas, you know, WordPress or something like that, you have to download a plugin or create it manually. So, yeah. <clears throat> so I'll just explain what no uh, meta keywords are. They're kind of like an outdated SEO um, uh, factor. Um, Duda actually offers you the, um, the option to add meta keywords, which I don't recommend you should because it's a waste of time. Um, down here, like page keywords, these are your meta keywords. So you don't actually need these. Um, so I would, I would ignore that. Um, so what you want to do is just put in a X or a Z there. This is how I do it. So you can either put an X or a Z, say no, yes, it's there. <clears throat> uh, the site architecture. Um, I'm going to do a video on how you can do the best site architecture or categorize URL structure for your clients. Um, I'm going to show you how I do that and how I actually create a nice clean strategy for the clients before I build a website. Um, and I'll actually include a template with that as well in, you know, uh, soon or hopefully maybe in the next video, in a couple of days. So, yeah. So um, what's great about site architecture on Duda is obviously you've got the pages down here and you can obviously put in the drop down boxes and things um, and you can change the URLs quite easily. <clears throat> which is pretty similar to other search, you know, obviously other, you know, Squarespace and WordPress and things, you can change the URLs quite simply like that. Um, but what I do really like about Duda is they can offer a folder section. And obviously if you're doing a Google ad, they offer a landing page section, but you can offer a folder section. So if you have maybe um, you want to keep a nice clean URL structure and you have maybe like legal pages, like a privacy policy page, um, terms of service page, maybe, you can actually um, create legal pages, a legal pages folder, sorry. Um, so you can have this in there and it's not a page. So it's, um, it doesn't actually come up as a page, it's actually a folder. And then you can put all your pages in here. Obviously it's come up here and a way you can just um, you can just hide in nav navigation like that. So yeah, so that's really good. <clears throat> um, and another thing is 
if you have certain pages that are getting traffic and you want to redirect them in certain ways, uh, um, you can actually just go into the Duda editor down here and you go into settings and you can go to um, URL redirect. And this gives it a 302 redi uh, 301 redirect, sorry, rather than a 302 because a 302 is a temporary redirect and a 301 is a, um, a permanent redirect. And the way you can check um, if certain pages are working or not is actually you can go into uh, this program it's called uh, Screaming Frog. And what you can do is you can put your URL in here and you can actually see all the status codes in here. So say if you had a URL that was um, you know 301 move permanently, so that's okay. You just want to maybe double check that. But say if there was a URL that was, um, you know, uh, let's find a 302. 302. It's got loads and moved. Um, so say if there was a URL in here that was a 302, you just want to go over that and just create a URL redirect or a 404 because they're awful for um, SEO. Um, you don't want a broken page, so you can actually take that 404 and redirect it, and it actually prevents um, drops in search engine rankings as well. So that's really good. Um, I'll just show you how that can be done. So you just type in the uh, old URL, then you have the destination page in here, <clears throat> and then you just add simply like that. <clears throat> um, I'll see if I can go to my, other, my original website and just show you how I've done this. Um, so if we go settings, and we go... So I've got all these URL redirects here to um, clean the destination pages because some of them have sort of these numbers here um, and I just wanted to redirect them to the original pages. So like, and it's very simple. You don't have to add any sort of plugin or anything. They've already got it um, embedded into the site. What I do like about Doodra is they've kind of seen the issues and things that people um, have with SEO and things and they've kind of, um, sort of put them together in the website builder platform and um, so you don't have to do um, kind of certain work and you can actually save time and actually focus on things that are really important like building content and things like that so that's really nice <clears throat> um, obviously you want to download google search console and google analytics um, i'm not going to go into each one i'm just going to say that um, you can easily embed google analytics into duda when you go into settings google analytics and add it in here or you can add your sort of google search console code code in here and head html which is really nice um, obviously you've got the schema markup i add it manually in duda or you can use which i haven't used before uh, yext widget i think you may need an account with yext but you just type in yext here and you can actually uh, add local business markup so you can actually choose what markup you have, like phone number, you know, address, um, business name, logo, all these different things, products, keywords, brands, social media, service areas, all this stuff. And you can just add them in there. <clears throat> I maybe do like I might do a tutorial on how to do this because I haven't actually done, uh, I haven't actually used this, this um, Yext schema markup widget yet. But I will, um, I will hopefully make a tutorial because it may be easier than adding it manually into the code. Um, because I add, um, as you can see in the checklist, I add schema markup for the blog. I add it for the, um, uh, you know, news uh, for the blog articles. I add aggregate rating. I add sort of um, local business organization. All these. I also uh, another thing to mention: OG data. You can actually just go into pages. Sorry, not pages. Um, you can go into SEO and you can actually add. No, never mind. It is pages. Sorry. <clears throat> And you can actually add a open OG data is short for open graph data. Um, and you can actually add the image that you want to show up on Facebook or LinkedIn and other social networks. Um, so this is great. And this is you want to add this for all your pages. So if someone, sh a customer shares a page, uh, you want to have your obviously logo or your nice image or thumbnail and the description showing up for that um, for that page on social media, increasing your click through rate. Through social media as well <clears throat> so that's great and then we move on to page speed optimization which includes well what's great about, about um, Duda is they've really optimized their website builder for page speed optimization and um, Google have actually said page speed is a ranking factor um, that's proven to be a ranking factor so um, it's really important and Duda have actually really nailed this to be honest um, Obviously, you've got they've gone by Google Page Speed optimization. Um, I'm going to mention this a bit more, but they've actually added a global CDM, so a content delivery network, um, which actually which helps page speed, which is part of the um, checklist. So the checklist, 
Um, they also add the option to do lazy loading of images and widgets. So if you go into settings and then you go into SEO, you've got lazy loading of images and widgets here. And then you can actually, which is really clever, is it you can show sort of the normal fonts while it's loading, the system default fonts. And then obviously they change into custom fonts when, once it's loaded, which actually um, increases the page page speed and decreases the um, uh, the uh, requests as well when um, uh, the browser is trying to um, ask the host, the host for um, certain data and things like that. Um, so, yeah. So that's in terms of, I think there's a bit more. So obviously every image that you add, um, so we'll just show you an example of this. So every image that you add, um, let's just put a random image, it's optimized. Um, so if we go upload image, I'm just gonna put a random image of this. <laughs> and you'll actually be able to see this. So it usually says, but every image they add, they actually optimize the image. So they um, take away any of the um, sort of useless, uh, you know, um, parts of the file that we don't need that will slow the site down, which is really clever, um, which I really like because I, when I used to work with WordPress, I used to have to download an app, which would have to um, sort of go through the whole site and actually compress all the images down. What's really nice about this is every image is nicely optimized and compressed before it's actually put into the site, which is really nice. <clears throat> um, then we go back onto here again. Obviously, they do all the gzip and um, uh, JavaScript and things and minification, stuff like that. Um, again, the hosting, when you um, get a do the website, the hosting is on Amazon Web Services, which Amazon Web Services has proven to be one of the fastest um, hosting platforms there is out there. So that's, I mean, hosting is one of the key factors of page speed optimization. So that's really good. Um, so yeah, obviously you guys can research it if you'd like a bit more about the um, page speed and things, but I think that's, I've kind of covered most of it there, which is really nice. And then we go finally onto web design. What's really nice about um, Duda is they offer a mobile friendly and a tablet option. So you can, you can actually design your website. Things I've uh, struggled with Shopify and things that don't have an option to, um, or I don't know, but I worked with Shopify for quite a while and I couldn't actually design the mobile the mobile in a different way to the desktop. I couldn't do that. And what's really nice about Duda is the mobile can actually be designed completely differently to the um, desktop. So if we, we like we have the phone number up here, um, obviously the, these change the um, the format changes. Whereas compared to desktop, it completely changes again. We've got the phone number up here and we've got the uh, email here. In Shopify and things like that, when I used to do this, it kind of just did it automatically without me being able to customize it and things like that, which is what I found really nice about this. <clears throat> Especially because, um, first of all, mobile is a ranking factor. Um, Google's proven it. It's a uh, mobile um, optimization is a ranking factor. And in addition to this is user optimization, um, conversion rate and things like that. So most customers, like most of your customers that are landing on our website are going to be on their mobile, dependent on what sort of website and industry it is, but most of them are going to be on their mobile. So if you can actually design your website in a way that's different on mobile than it is to desktop, you're going to increase your conversion rate. So that's really nice. I thought that was a really nice um, uh, uh, feature to add. And in same with tablet as well. They change it in tablet too. <clears throat> obviously, you can. So obviously, you got the NAP on your site, um, which is great for local SEO. Um, you got the social media on site. You've got your breadcrumbs that kind of comes under. Um, uh, schema markup as well. Uh, you've got site search and things, which is great for finding out what people are searching on your site for keyword research and things like that. Um, so you guys can use this. You know, I'll I'll put it in the link link in the description below um, for your Duda sites and things. Um, I think I've covered everything for the minute. This is just a sort of short summary on Duda and the SEO. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's everything. Okay, uh, remember to subscribe and like this video. Uh, thank you very much, guys. Cheers.